Okay, hello and welcome to the February meeting of the Ohio Libertarian Party Mises Caucus. Um, the mandates are still awful and evil and the Libertarian Party is still trucking along. Some things are going well, some things are not. We had the first Mises Caucus social in the Northwest, so nice. Soon we can get one in the Southeast, as soon as one, someone's exists in the southeast ohio right now it's empty but i'm sure two people are moving down there soon i don't know eventually um yeah it's who here actually follows internal libertarian party national politics and all the different state stuff it's a cluster you don't even want to know at this point it's just So, like, because New Hampshire was bad and stupid, right? And the hope was that New Hampshire was so bad that people were going to stop doing that. It turns out what actually happened is that some people saw New Hampshire and used it as a learning opportunity to do a better job at hit pieces, which is where we have... Wyoming, Massachusetts, Delaware, Georgia. <laughs> but it's, it's going okay. And, and half of them were running. Like Vermont was going to have something finicky happen, and then it didn't. And uh, Arizona, there was some talk about people trying to collude, and then they just weren't organized enough, apparently. <laughs> and now their convention's over, and they're all gone. So who cares? Um, but yeah, no, things are going well. We're on track for National Convention, although if you haven't signed up, do sign up. Um, because we'll have a bunch of alternate spots that we're trying to fill. I did not realize not as many people sign up for my emails as I thought they did because I couldn't see the number on them and I had the wrong number because there were 50 slots and there were only 70 something or no, sorry, they're out of with 40 slots available. There were only 70 something total signups from all the Ohio party. And I know I emailed 70 Mises caucus only people like that had said they would eventually do this and told, like specifically asked them to sign up. So don't know where you all are, but you should be signing up. Um, what else was here? Ohio convention is now there is a time, there is a date. It is set. Prices are coming very soon. We're working out speakers. It does not seem like Ohio is going to have any of the Mises Caucus firebrands. I know you're all hoping for. We're not going to have a Dave Smith or Scott Horton. It's a long story short, Ohio doesn't like to pay for speakers. And a lot of the Mises Caucus kind of endorsed speakers are paid. Because like uh, Spike Cohen or like I believe even Justin Amash will actually come out and speak for free, which is kind of like just different situations of some people make their money off speaking some people don't and whatever else so it is what it is but like angela and them like people running for candidates should still probably come out it'll still be a really good time and we'll pass some fun stuff um honestly i'm just so tired of the national stuff i don't even want to get i don't even know what to get into with it but other than we're doing pretty well um, in terms of delegate counts, we're not, we're, we're about at what was hopefully projected to get a win in Reno, um, but we're not, we're not doing really well, but we're not doing badly. Because hopefully when like California and a few other the big states come in, um, it, it's going to swing more towards us. You know, that's the hope, but it's just trucking along. Um let me think of what else is happening right now that's worth mentioning um we do we are onboarding a, a candidate organizer um whose name starts with a j and i have written down somewhere if i want to look them up so we're gonna we're gonna be pushing the kind of local elections next time a little bit better because last time we said go out and do local elections, but didn't really provide any support or trainings for it. So this time we're going to have a bit of a better system for that. Um, and honestly, just the Mises Caucus Ohio has been more or less organized or had more or less organizers. 
if you feel like you want to do more stuff and we're not reaching out and asking you to do stuff, but you would like to do stuff, please reach out to us. I know our job as like the caucus organizers is to reach out to you and figure out the opportunities and everything, but it's kind of like a game of whack-a-mole with everything on fire at the state party right now with IT issues. So it's uh, sometimes hard to reach out to you all, but we will be needing lots of support, especially for the upcoming uh, central committee elections. Um, does anyone here live in the Cuyahoga area or like, or is it Cuyahoga? What the Northeast ish? Let's see. I, no one is talking. Okay. I'm just going to keep saying things. Which of these is the new? I don't actually have a map of the new congressional districts yet. Um, okay. Have those districts even been approved yet? No. But the old ones still close. And we need that. We essentially need to start using something, whether or not they're approved, because we need to hold the election based on our constitution. Um, but I think it's, uh, you know, I'm actually going to double check this. There are certain districts where some people are where we really want to make sure that we have someone to run so that they do not get their seat again. Not that they're a bad person, just that they are a bad fit for that position. Um, but also in general, there are lots of districts. We need lots of people to run because that the central committee elected you know, two per congressional district is what determines who the executive committee who actually runs the state party are, which is fairly important. And I believe the district, where is district? That is an awful looking map. You're not wrong. Um, actually, is this the, where's district 16? Shoot, I literally lost a district. Right where Wayne is. Oh, okay. Right where right. There we go. Yeah. yeah. So District 16, which is that is a funky looking district. I agree. Um, we need people to run there. Um, if anyone was was at the previous conference for the Ohio Libertarian Party, you would know why. But needless to say, we need people to run for that. And then there's going to be lots of them that have open spots and other stuff like that. Um, because that it's kind of, you know, each state does things differently. For most of them, all their elections happen at the convention or, or just do not. They happen outside of the convention. We'll actually be setting up a um, election in each district that I will be sending out and pushing. I know that Franklin County, I wanna say it's actually a Tuesday night. I wanna say the, I don't even remember what, what day it is. I think it's like the end of March, we're gonna have it. And I'm just literally gonna sit in the Franklin County LPO office for like five hours, wait for people to come in and take their votes. And that's how we're doing it because I have my problems with the Ohio Libertarian Party constitution, but it's how we're doing it now. So, I'm Drake, uh, Drake, to do that, participate, do we have to be just uh, registered as a libertarian or can we just be in the state party? Uh, I believe that neither is a requirement. Okay. I believe they're entirely an open primary. Okay. Although, if I've not said it before, I will say it again. Uh, please do not vote in a Republican or Democrat primary. If you vote in a primary, please request a, um, what's the word? Issues only. Issues only, yep, issues only ballot. If you vote free in Ohio, the only way to change your party affiliation is to vote for the primary of a specific party. Then you become that party. Um, so don't vote for them. And what's his name? The Republican guy running. 
I'm, I would like to see him win, but I don't think he's going to, I don't think it's anywhere close to him unseating DeWine, unless anyone else has a different opinion. Does anyone think DeWine, there's a chance DeWine's going down? Because I don't see it. God, I'd help. Get, I no idea. What, well, what is your reasoning for thinking DeWine will win? Because he is pretty universally hated. No, he's not. I know so many people that love DeWine, especially like centrist Democrats, the entire city of Columbus. That's what I was going to say is it's probably somewhat in Columbus because that is the most liberal part of the state. But I have a suspicion that here in Dayton, not so much. Well, sure, but you only need Columbus, Cincinnati, and Cleveland. Right. Cincinnati is also more of a working class town than Columbus is, too. Oh, yeah. Well, and the thing is, maybe he'll get primary. But the working the problem with working class stuff is they don't vote in Republican primary. So I don't know. I, I honestly, I, I hope it happens. I just, there are people that are like, oh, well, I need to not vote Libertarian because I'm going to vote for him. It's like, hey, your vote's not going to make the difference. And I'm a bit pessimistic on it. But I would love to be proven wrong. Um, although I haven't actually looked into him enough to know if he's good on anything else. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that central committee election is going to be the big thing coming up. Then let me see if there was anything else on the agenda. I was thinking about having an all Ohio like social. And then I realized that's the convention. The convention is going to be the all Ohio social. It will be a party. Show up. We'll all get wasted together and trash the state. By the time you leave, the state will be destroyed, you know? Um, oh, so volunteers within the state party. So the state party is getting better. If you didn't know it was incredibly sick, um, it's been faking it really well, but a lot of things have been iffy in Ohio. Uh, anyone that's actually tried to get help from the Ohio State Party knows what I'm talking about, like Mark. Hey, Mark, if you had to rate the Ohio Libertarian Party on a scale of zero to 10 for effectiveness and work output, maybe even professionalism. Yeah, I think um, I'd have to look at, I'd have to talk about some of the different individuals, but <laughs> But I think overall, I'd give it maybe a two. <laughs> that might be generous. Now, now, if you remove me from it to pulling up the average, <laughs> then it drops to zero. I'm a 10. Everyone else is a zero. You know how it is. No, it, it's... And sure, it's you are great. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I respond to emails. Sure, I haven't updated the 900 data lines in the CRM that I need to manually update because that's how our CRM works. Um, 900 lines and I, we can't export the data so I have to I have to verify everyone it's a, it's a mess that's all when we get fill in there it'll all be better yeah so the, the good news with that um, is somebody building something in the background there there we go it's squeaking yeah I realized it was uh, something going on someone's screen they didn't know if they knew about um, so I needed them but yeah the you the Ohio is probably going to move over to the national CRM. Um, for those of you that haven't touched the CRM or didn't even know we had one, you probably don't care. Um, for people running county affiliates, what that means is that you will be able to on command get an access to a, a list of at least like 2000 contacts per county. Um, and usually more than that. So it will be big news when it actually happens, but it's lots of things in progress. But the stuff that we really need right now for Ohio volunteers, one, um, we are re kickstarting the communications division in Ohio, and they're trying to do a lot of stuff. They are, you know, doing anything from making videos to social media managers to writing articles, whatever else. If you've ever had a libertarian opinion, and you've wanted to share it, and people wouldn't listen to you, this is your chance. You will be given a microphone, just write op-eds. <laughs> um, but and it's a good group, and especially if you, 
if you really, if you came to the Mises caucus because you care about messaging and you want the Libertarian Party to have a good messaging, this will literally make you one of the four people in charge of the Libertarian Party messaging for the state of Ohio. So, yeah. Did I, I think, did I send out the link in the last uh, uh, monthly email? I believe so. I believe you did. Okay, perfect. I'm not crazy. Um, but that would be the big one. The other one is if you know anyone willing to be an IT director, which is a big ass to be an unpaid IT director, we need one. We have people that are doing IT stuff, but no one who's kind of has the full time to devote to being like a director role. But it's, it's working out. But if you know any libertarians interested in IT that may want to be our director, please let me know. It would make me really happy. And I need to follow up with people Phil sent me for non-director, but other IT stuff roles. Um, what else is needed to stay party? And then there's there's always more volunteer stuff to do. So if you if you if you want to help out but you don't know what, just email Mises Caucus Ohio at gmail.com or message me in the Discord or whatever. I have roles. It's just too many ongoing fires to plan ahead and make systems of processing everyone coming in on a rapid flood of an email list. We're getting better at it, but it's still people are slipping through the cracks. Any questions, comments, thoughts about any of that? Just this deluge. I'm how just how would we go after these positions again, Drake? Um, for the communications role, uh, there is a specific form for it that was sent out in the monthly email, um, which I can put in the chat right now. Um, Thanks. I was going to say I'm a recent join. Yeah, it is communication. Uh, lpo.org slash comms volunteer copy link address oh and i forgot actually if you want to have lots of fun um ohio just started it's in, an internal uh what's the word libertarian party volunteer discord so this is not the mises caucus one this is for all of ohio it's just a more informal thing than rocket chat because it took everyone forever to get into rocket chat so that so brianna the new person in charge of the comms team was like hey let's do something faster so this now exists it's semi like unofficial and it'll kind of be a thing to even co coordinate outside the actual like libertarian party. So we might like have people on it that are just helping us out with one event, but aren't really libertarians. So please play nice. Um, but if all of you want to join, I just put the link in the chat. Please do not be awful trolls. <laughs> Thank you. Come to my TED talk. But yeah, so two links in the chat. Then for the other volunteer positions, um message me and not at my lpoe email address i know phil messaged me there and i just i don't know how to set it up with my phone i don't always check it just use the mises caucus ohio one it works so much better um like i looked at it right now and i just noticed that i am missing i missed like three emails Um, any, anything else, any other comments, thoughts, concerns? Questions, queries, things you want to know? What's the meaning of life? Drake, you were saying, you were saying the income coming list is up to 500. It's, it's uh, a lot, oops, sorry. A lot of those are old. A lot of those are kind of old leads. Is that? Yes. I, I, I think. Okay. Yes. The vast, the vast overwhelming majority are old leads, but it is up to 506. Okay. And the cap for Gmail is 500 addresses to one BCC email, which, I mean, it's not an insurmountable task. I just make two emails, but it was a emotional line that i drew that i hope to never get past that we have now
strongly burst fast. <laughs> is that when you hit? What do you say? Is that for the um, uh, the the monthly? Yeah, the monthly yeah. update. Yep. Okay. Every time I send out a bulk email, so like even just for the reminder about this email meeting, I just I copy the Excel whole column, throw it in the BCC column of a Gmail, and hit send after proofreading. Cool. Sometimes. Okay. I try to proofread. Just hard to, it's hard to proofread dates because, like, how am I supposed to know February fourteenth isn't a Thursday? I'm not going to cross-reference my calendar. I did it when I wrote it. Sure, I wrote it wrong, but yeah. No, my, my, my husband. If you get an email from me that looks neat and professional and all the spellings right, there's no run on sentences. It means my husband proofread it. If it's not, it means he didn't. This sounds like a joke. But I literally get comments on my op-eds when he doesn't proofread them because it's that obvious. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, there was the protest up in. Who actually is? Uh, I don't see Kennedy on here. There was a protest. Uh, yeah, Friday. I don't know how it went. I wanted to know. I, was I, I thought it was this Friday. Oh, is it this Friday? I think it is. Yeah, it's um, Friday. You are correct, sir. Where is it? Um, north. Northeast. Northeast. Uh, Trumbull. Trumbull County. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Up, up by Youngstown and Warren. That was uh, Kennedy Edwards, I think, set that up. Yep. So there were two uh, college students that were interested in organizing a protest. Reached out to us for help. I gave him Kennedy, and Kennedy does things effectively. So probably all is going well. Um, and then there's always more of this stuff happening all over the state. We're trying to put together some way of tracking it because right now it's a bunch of random groups that are kind of disconnected. And also like half the stuff the groups do, I don't really care about or want to know about. Like I'm not going to subscribe to your email list if two thirds of the things you send me are just back to blue on repeat and like boomer memes. I get enough boomer memes on Facebook. Um, yeah, it's like fake mask USA and their email list of like, hey, here's our new mug. 100 things that liberals hate all on a mug. Just like this giant wall of text. And like, thanks, boomer. Um, <laughs> no, I'm a boomer at heart, so I can't complain too much. Um but yeah, so like, so we're looking at setting up some thing of keeping track of when that mandates and or when the protests and things are happening. But there is good stuff happening. Uh, I know that Warren County put out a press release about the uh, constitutional carry stuff, um, which Franklin County is probably going to copy paste it and uh, steal all the credit with our bigger email list. <laughs> no, we'll give we'll credit. Um, but have um, that spread it around, please. <laughs> well, but I. We need to figure out how to do this stuff better because of like Franklin County, we're building, a, we're set, we're doing a mailer campaign against school mask mandates. A couple of our members are going out and protesting a local school district every month and getting kicked out by the cops. So they went, so like Michael Sweeney went and like set up a mailer for it and everything. Um, but it's like, don't really good system for disseminating it all. So it doesn't get disseminated. Here, I'll open and tab. I'm curious, will this actually work? If you guys click on this link, will the image open for you? I'm not sure if it will or won't. It did for me. Yeah, so that works for me. But yeah, that is a uh, printable postcard that you can just send out if you want to tell people, hey, why the hell are kids still masked? Why? Um, trying to think what else to cover. I need to show up to my local city council. Drew, I, I assume you're there. I'm going to confess to you. I am just not temperamentally suited to do it. I just don't want to barge in and talk to them and deal with like, making the speech out of nowhere for the specific policies and I should do it. 
I know the mayor personally. I had like an hour long talk with like the finance director of my city. They all know me. They'd probably like, they'd li- they definitely listen to me even more than a total render off the street. And I just, I know when the meetings are, <laughs> I just don't show up and do it. What should I do, Drew? It's, it's, it is hard to keep the right temperament. <clears throat> Every time I go to a meeting, which is several times a week, I try my best not to just start swearing at them because they're obviously retarded. Um, Fair yeah, enough. It's, tr- it's tricky. I mean, I would recommend, you know, go in there, obviously do a little bit of research but on what you want to talk about um, and have it, you know, written out there. Have your husband double check your little notes on what you want to say and try and stick to the script. I know every time I've tried to write up like that, I throw it out the window because as soon as they start talking, they say more stuff that pisses me off and I'd rather yeah. talk about that than whatever I was going to talk about. Well, that's what I want to know is like, do I just print off five copies of the same legislation with me and just like talk specifically to it and do like my, here's my three minute spiel on why you should decram weed because you want to like have less negative police interactions or, or been no knock raids or whatever. Like, is that where you go? Or do you like show up five times talking about other stuff first? Or do you literally read the text of your bill or I mean, you, there's different routes you could go. I mean, obviously, it depends on how your city council reacts to things. What I would suggest doing is, uh, you know, send them all, every member of the council, an email with your proposed uh, ordinance that you want to have passed um, and do a little write-up on it in the email. And then when you go before council, say, hey, you know, I had sent all of you guys an email. Not sure if you saw it, but this is what it is. I wouldn't go into the details of the actual text of it, but say, hey, I want to decrim marijuana, and this is why. And these are the other cities email. in Ohio that have done that. I didn't know their emails were public. Oh, a lot of them have emails and their phone numbers public. Hmm. Yeah, and if you um, have a good one, you know, they'll call you right back or text you back. And I mean, it's in their best interest to keep in, involved with the, the citizens because they are their electors. I mean, yeah, no, it makes you. sense. No, yeah. okay. Um, is it the city council or is it the... And you can also do it the opposite way, too. You can go before council and say... You send them as a follow-up afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could send out the email that way. Or you could hand them paper copies of, hey, here's this ordinance. You know, we're, we're not the... Marijuana is not this boogeyman. Here's other cities in Ohio that have decriminalized it. Yeah. And just hope you don't get a police chief like Kent that says... I don't give a shit if you guys decriminalize this. It's still against Ohio law. I'm just going to write up the Ohio code. Oh, did the Kent, has Kent been doing that? Oh, that's what he said, because Kent's trying to petition it right now. Yeah. And he goes, I really don't care what you guys end up doing. It's still against the Ohio law. And I'll just have my guys write up the Ohio code for the citation. Well, I know I have the finance director on my side. They're trying to think, like, get, oh, because Gahanna's like the herb capital of the world. Um, so they're trying to... Uh, get like a marijuana research thing from john hopkins in our area so like at least some people in the city council are like forward already i don't know i just need to do it i need to actually just show up i mean is that your number one issue that you want to address with him it's it's the one that i already have stuff written out the most that's kind of would be the easiest intro because this is kind of like a purplish and vaguely socially progressive town it's like they, there were signs up like vaguely in support of BLM kind of stuff. And this is, so that's kind of like, what's the least aggressive thing that I can lead with that is impactful and matters to then go on and do something else? Like if I was in a red town, I would start with uh, gun sanctuary cities. And it's just like, to me, those are kind of like one or the other is going to be your most popular, least offensive thing. And then from there, we can go on to other stuff. But I don't, I don't think, I don't think Gehanna is going to do anything for anti-COVID. It's not the town for it. And that's and kind of the, the goal of the local lobbying isn't to push the town a bunch. I mean, you can, and if you can, good. Um, the goal is to uh, minimum effort for most return get them to pass the stuff they already want to pass but don't know exists hopefully although if you're if you're willing and able to 
take the fight and actually push, push them like Drew is more power to you. But I'm definitely not. I am. I have enough bandwidth to go there and talk for a bit and then like not show up for two months. I mean, I, I like the way that you put those two together, considering uh, all the BLM protests and everything else. So folks need to wake up and realize that the war on drugs is how we got here. We can talk yeah. about the race stuff. That's fine. But the war on drugs is how we got here. Yep. Yep. So you hit you hit that. You hit the marijuana decrim, no knock raids, couple uh civil asset forfeiture is another big one, obviously. And it's like and some of them they're not that political. They don't even know civil asset forfeiture exists. I mean most freaking BLM protesters don't know what civil asset forfeiture is. Of course, your city council doesn't know. Yeah, that, that is the issue, is that, it, that suburbia has been convinced that police are a necessary thing just to keep order, but they don't realize that it's basically a militarization of the state so that we can confiscate money from the poor and call it making life better. Yeah, and, and you can even sell it in like a good way. It's like, a, hey, my goal here is to make cops more effective and have a better interaction with their community. And I think that forcing cops to arrest someone every time they smell weed, that may, puts them in danger and makes it harder for them to be trusted and it makes it harder for people to call them when they need them. So you can t- sell it in a totally pro-cop way. and But it's... It's hard to argue with for some people. And then obviously, like if you're in a totally red area, they won't do it. But then you go for something else and just, hey, the NRA doesn't like hates gun rights, but we love gun rights. Here's what you should pass. (laughs) If if we're in favor of vaccine mandates, why can't we be in favor of gun mandates? (laughs) Or I think... Do we have, I think we have some sample legislation for even vaccine mandate stuff. And we've had a few people that have done really well also showing up to school boards and stopping mask mandates for kids. And now they are going away. So if your area still has one, um, you are in the super minority of Ohio. It's now at like 70, pardon me, 74% or so without one. So the argument by a majority is a logical fallacy, but it's also really effective. And you just say, hey, three fourths of the state has realized this stupid. This is stupid. The CDC doesn't think it works and your kid's not at risk. Just stop. And it works sometimes, or at least it pushes it. I'm going to stop rambling. Anything else in particular that anyone else wanted to talk about? Because I actually need to run to a medical marijuana meetup that I'm trying out to see if they are interested in any collab work. You know, I dropped some great albums. That was really funny, guys. I know. Oh, I, I, you're all muted, but I can see the uproarious laughter. There's one thing, which is I saw some news here today that uh, you're talking the NRA not being truly pro-gun, and that's absolutely true. Yes. Um, And just today, they partnered with with, uh, Dianne Feinstein on some Violence Against Women Act, which doesn't, I always have nice sounding names, don't they? But there's uh, provisions inside that that Number one, every time somebody fails a NICS check, it would go to local law enforcement as an incident report, and state and local prosecutors would be deputized as part-time United States attorneys and state and local cops would be deputized as part-time ATF agents to investigate and prosecute violations of this new law. Um, oh, Mark, I think you got it all backwards. Weren't you watching the ATF's Twitter? These are just Valentine's Day cards. <laughs> Oh God, that was crazy. Like that, I don't see that many like that that's social media stuff. But that one came across, and it's like, really? Did everyone see this? The ATF was literally posting, "Hey, if you have an ex that has illegal guns, send us their information. Here are our tip lines." It wasn't just yes, that. They were like, that. "A Valentine's Day doesn't just have to be for couples. If you have a bad reputation with your ex, <laughs> you can report them to us." It's just basically trying to swap people, yeah. but officially. Yes. It's ridiculous. 
they should have actually said, hey, lose a game of Call of Duty. <laughs> Call us. <laughs> That goes right alongside the NSA charging stations for phones in the airport. <laughs> yeah, plug your phone into this. We'll, we'll charge it real good for you. That sounds about right. Oh, it's crazy. Oh, actually, the other big news. Did you guys, uh, who here had any has ever had involvement with Young Americans for Liberty? Okay, it's not a ton of us. Um. So they're one of the bigger Liberty student groups, probably the biggest one that's been effective. They came, they were originally students for Ron Paul, but Ron Paul was like, hey, there's this big group. I'm not running for president. But you should still like do shit. So they got together and formed a student group and have been really active across colleges. They've gotten a bunch of people elected and like supported people like Rand Paul and the like, obviously Thomas Massey, et cetera, et cetera. And they were a great group when I was in college. Um, and I was president of the, college, of the chapter. So of course it was great. But they are taking a turn to more of a, let me put it this way, uh, a few staffers were let go for being overly critical of Liz Cheney. Yeah, so it's unfortunate, but it also, uh, I, I just a little bit want to like, take some post-libertarian just like rub their face and the, the whole thing is like oh well you you're putting all this work in to like take over the libertarian party and it's not effective when you can just like automatically take over the republican party and like do all the stuff and it's like no they will stop you just as hard as they stop anyone they will not let you take over the, the republican party if you're doing a good job they will take over your organizations they just haven't bothered yet because you're not big enough. Like the, the Republican party didn't support Ron Paul. Ron Paul did well because a bunch of non-Republicans joined the primary and voted for him and then went on to vote for people like Bernie Sanders and whatever else. Like the Republican party doesn't support you and it will at every chance just co-opt your stuff like the tea party and trash it into nothingness and hopefully you can still advance liberty in the republican party but yeah your best case study was this group and it's now dying while the mises caucus is ascending and i'm sad to see it go because i gave them money and i've supported them they've been a great group but it does it is a a bit of a blow in the argument of well just become republicans and then we'll be easy <laughs> Sorry, just I need to tr I need to throw well, trying in to co mandatory post libertarian trashing. Well, they're trying to co op Mises Caucus stuff too, isn't there? A Republican Mises Caucus too? I see a lot of people joking about it, at least in Discord. Oh, I would be proud of that. How does that work no. exactly? It just makes you don't, caucus you don't want to Mises Caucus. Yeah, it's like right? anyone, anyone can form a caucus. The, the name Mises is taken by other groups. Like, to be fair, if you look at like Mises Institutes around the world, like the Mises Institute Japan was more like a Cato kind of thing. And like, there are, it, it's a name. You can throw it on anything. And Andrew from Popular Liberty started the Republican Party Mises Caucus. Um, he has two central ideas. And they are both bad ideas. <laughs> um, I hope that he does well in taking over local elections, although now he's turned it into a lobbying group. And they're not even running for local elections. And, and I have written a lot of criticisms of his work. That it's like literally, it's about a fourth of the entire Ohio uh, op-ed sub stack is just criticisms of Andrew. And he will not go on any podcasts with me. But he always says, oh, no one's challenging my arguments. Like, why? Like, I'm happy to talk to anyone. And then I give him the challenges. He went on a podcast that I was on after I was on to respond. But he won't go on with me because I'm right. And he knows it. I, I have a beef with Andrew. It's ongoing. It's fun, though. But, yeah, no. The Republican Party Mises Caucus is they think will take your money and lobby for a state law to change that will do essentially nothing to improve your life. 
my words, not his, but yeah, not worth your time. Like they don't even run local candidates. They sort of say they do, but their website's also not put together. Sorry, I'm just ranting now. Anything else? Other stuff you guys want to talk about? Um, who all is going to Reno? We're all excited. I am. Uh, Helen is the convention committee chair. So she's going to be the one contacting everyone and being like, hey, do you still want to go? And like letting you know, um, we're going to be putting the list together in the nearest future. I will be like assistant in some way, I think. Um, we haven't actually, I haven't actually made the motion yet. I should make the motion in the XCOM. Um, but yeah, it, it's going to be a party. Only thing is, if you are at Reno, we do enforce um, curfews and drink limits because we need you to be there at 8 a.m. and voting. <laughs> and that is the issue. If not earlier, right? <laughs> uh, no, it won't be that bad. It, it's not. It, as long as we can vaguely drag you into the room and you can lie there sleeping, I will kick you away. We need you to vote. Can we drink during the convention? Yes. In fact, you're okay, engaged. Good. There you go. Hey, they have all their training stuff is about, hey, what can you do to make people more willing to be in the convention room the whole time? So their training is about these are the kinds of games to bring with you and blankets and snacks and booze, to just like keep you all entertained. We're just going to set up an adult play, uh, playpen. I'll bring some, what, uh, like a ball pit or something. I don't know. Gigantic pillow fort. Yeah. I do balloon animals. Honestly, I next time when we finally go back to doing uh, county fairs, I'm going to do balloon animals for our county, uh, or for our table, for the Franklin County Party. Because every time I do balloon animals for county fair, because I do it or for like a fair event, because I do it with Gehanna Rotary, because I'm also Rotarian, you get a 25 minute waiting line at your table continuously for hours. The people just can you, get, can you get designed balloons that have like Mises Caucus or Libertarian Party or something on them? Yeah, super easy. Okay, cool. But also I can just like make the other random things out of balloons and it's just incredibly popular. And I'm just next, I'm just going to do it. And you will see the Libertarian Party booth just has this massive line of people there and not everyone's going to get preached to, but you know, while you're blowing up a balloon, it takes a minute or two and then you can offer them a petition to sign or talk to them about stuff while they're waiting for their kids to get a balloon. Have someone on the side preaching, but yes. not too hard. <laughs> exactly. It's all about how you're coercing this balloon into a new shape. Oh, wait. No, no, no. <laughs> yes, it is all coercion. It's being detained. <laughs> oh, I, I listened to some, like, nutrition stuff, and there was this debate at the Oxford whatever, whatever. Like, I think Tom Woods might have been at one of those, or maybe it's the Harvard Forum or something, with, with like, a pro versus anti-meat one. Michaela Peterson was one of the speakers, but one of the anti-meat speakers – has a 12 minute speech about how eating meat is um, racist, sexist, imperialism, both against natives and against animals. I saw that and I'm pretty sure I saw Jordan Peterson in the audience and I saw him absolutely. Uh, yeah, the, the audience reactions are the best. Oh my gosh, they were you watch the audience, fun. they're just like falling over. <laughs> She's like, I know this might be the first time some of you are hearing the truth, but it must be said. And it was ridiculous. She was just out of her minds. And I most of us probably pay for her salary through taxes. What a lovely time there is. Indirectly, of course, through grants and shit, but essentially we're paying her to talk like that. I actually think Jordan Peterson mentioned that on the Rogan podcast a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Nice. 
Oh, I love Dave Smith on Rogan, although I wish he had shouted out the Mises Caucus. Everyone was waiting and never came. <laughs> oh. He, he kind of rehashed a lot of old material on that show. It was kind of odd. Yeah, but I mean, I think that he was more... It, it's hard, like sometimes just with podcasts in general where <clears throat> you can't have a set of... like it, In a debate, you can have like your five talking points and go in, but like on a podcast like that, I know a couple people that have like brought on one or two things they really wanted to say, but you get like two and he had Yemen, but even like, it was like, Rogan's like, okay, spell out for me, your libertarian policies. And then Dave Smith does war. And then Rogan start, it was just total segue, different direction. Hey, did you hear about this? I don't even remember what it was. It was just like, I literally thought I missed something. And I went back again. I'm just like, nope, he's just stoned and rambling. I mean, it's good stuff to be on the National Forum, and, and I apologize for rehashing this for people that, that have been on it. But, yeah, the anti-war stuff's really big um, yeah. because it, to, for it to reach an audience of people that don't realize how much BS it went into, that's good. But you're right. He he didn't get to cover anything. Yeah, well, if more people know about Yemen, it's, it's insane. It's still insane. 400,000 children last year. That's the estimate for how many starved to death. It's, I mean, obviously, I don't know what good this is for the order, but I'm, a, you know, Operation Iraqi Freedom, that, so to yeah. me, it's weird to turn into this anti-war person after being called up at, you know, 20 years old. It's really bizarre. Yeah, well, and it's, it's hard, especially because you're not really given the full information before you sign up, and once you're in there, they own you, and if you want to get access to the services afterwards, you can't step too far out of line it's it's just really odd being around friends and family now and you know me saying that this ukraine business is going to turn out to be a bunch of bullshit and they're just like what yeah okay if anyone if anyone asks, no russia is not invading ukraine there is no reason to think it and here is the biggest one like i like i like to have one big piece of evidence then you have other stuff but like there's one big one so if Russia invaded Ukraine, who would like stand to lose the most? The Ukrainian president, who is like US propped up, hated by Russia, and would be exiled if not killed, right? The literal guy whose butt's in the line who would get overthrown, who supports the US. Like that would be the guy that really is invested in not getting not russia not evading and also probably knows what the heck's going on right like he lives there he is the president i assume they like know what's going on he has unilaterally repeatedly said no this is nonsense there is nothing there please stop saying these random rumors it's just making my life harder and it's like it's similar thing like global warming. So you just need one big piece of evidence that just like tears it apart. And it's like I don't, I literally don't know what your response to that would be. Yeah, I think it's important for uh, veterans to. Um, I think it's it's very important for veterans to stand up and be heard on these topics. I always make it a point, you know, I'll, I'll point out I was in the air force for nine years and, and basically that experience has did a lot to teach me just how stupid and corrupt the federal government really is. <laughs> and, um, and, um, how you should not trust them and all the waste I saw, I mean, it was absolutely ridiculous. Um, of course, most of mine was during the Clinton era, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they'd actually look pretty good compared to what we've had since. <laughs> yeah, well, except for Wag the Dog, I I yeah. literally didn't know how bad that was, and then going back and looking at it, it's like, no, he literally bombed a hospital to distract from Monica Lewinsky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, the good news, you guys know, defend the guard, right? Mm-hmm. Grossly, I want to say I've heard it. So it's, all for it. Yeah. So defend the guard. The National Guard makes up like a decent portion of the U.S. military overseas, um, especially kind of the ones like occupying bases longer term. Um, but the fun thing with the National Guard is they are under the jurisdiction of the states, not the federal government. So the defend the guard says, um, 
I'm going to paraphrase the text, but it's like a one page bill that says the National Guard cannot be deployed for any military action unless there has been a constitutional issuance of war by the U.S. Congress or something like that. That's or right. A declaration of war as yeah. stated in the Constitution. Absolutely. That's Which right. It can only be done by Congress, of course. Right. I think I heard that on Rogan or whatever it was I was looking up now because that was my my game plan was this, yep. if, if this thing unfolds in Ukraine, I'm going to scream from every option I get to tell people that why is there not a declaration of war? This is bullshit because I was an Ohio National Guardsman when all that stuff went down. Yeah, well, and that's uh, there is a Congress person in Ohio previous like a vet who is pushing it. Um, Looks like Ron Ferguson from District 96, according to their website. Yeah, I think he's the one that the Libertarian Party has worked with in the past also. Um, but I mean, this is a kind of thing where especially a veteran supporter for him is worth 100 non-veteran supporters because when you go up and speak, you have legitimacy that I don't. So, like, I'd say reach out. It's not going to hurt. And maybe it can help that, like, if we, I don't know if you can get 10 veterans together and they can just go in and knock on the door of Congress people and say, hey, we are all like National Guard veterans that were deployed and want to talk to you. Like, they're not going to say no. <laughs> I don't think. Yeah. I need- I need to poke some of the guys that I was deployed with and see how they're doing these days on some of these issues. Yeah. Well, and it's also, if, if you can put together some, like, anything to of what to do, but, yeah, with Defend the Guard, it is going well. Um, be, obviously, when it started off, it was real bad. Like, you guys, so I've heard some of the stories, because y'all was one of the big groups supporting it, so I got to listen to some of the actual state reps, and they were literally physically threatened by generals brought in, like, to talk about this, and, like, block the door have a private chat in their face and these like vets are saying like no like i'm going to do this you're not going to stop me and then you know they bring in every general they can to tell us tell the state legislature and it gets voted down and it gets voted down again and then every year it keeps coming up and now it's biden's wars not trump's wars and all this stuff and all of a sudden one state had a majority of the state congress in favor of defend the guard it's tough for us because the ohio national guard supported the war on terror so much and here in dayton mike turner is on the uh whatever defense committee or whatnot it's insane because he you know he's a republican in dayton and you know tries to vote the right way so to speak in people's eyes but i'm like dude he's bringing pork back constantly yeah and it's all about supporting right pat because it's one of the biggest bases in the country yep no, it's but it's it's going better. And as soon as one state does it, the rest can domino real fast. And I think is it Washington that's ahead. I think of West Virginia that? got. I think well, West Virginia got close with it. Yeah, I know. I know there's some state that be- they got it to actually be a majority pushing for, like majority of the Congress. But then they had. Alas, like, but then COVID canceled the session or something. So it's getting close. Oh, yeah, West Virginia, looks like, might happen. You know, I really don't like it when they bring in the generals and get their damn opinion. I mean, it's like, it's your job to go fight the war when Congress tells you to. It's not your job to have a fucking opinion about it. Go home. <laughs> um, <laughs> just, like, just like asking cops about gun rights. Oh, well, we don't want the citizens to have that. No, fuck you. Go home. (laughs) You know, Uh, it makes no damn sense. Why would you talk to these people? Their job is not to set policy and it never should be. (laughs) Oh, well. (laughs) The issue is, is they're using the generals to convince the politicians why they need to keep the war machine alive. And that's why it's so tough in here in Ohio is because, and it's hilarious because Wright Pad Air Force Base doesn't have an active airplane on it. The only birds that are here belong to the guard and the reserve, but it doesn't change the fact that there's, it's the number one employer in Dayton, hands down. Really? I did not know that. Oh yeah. The number two employer in Dayton are the two, the three medical 
um, companies, you know, Children's Hospital and the other two, and the number one employer is Wright Pat Air Force Base. It's a massive research laboratory with a massive um, section of intelligence. Obviously, I'm connected with lots of friends and whatnot. We still talk, and you know, yeah. for the most part, we can talk on politics, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, and I could talk aerospace because that's where I got my start. Was at Wright Pat as a second lieutenant way back in the day. So. Um, but the Aeronautic Systems Center, all of the acquisition of aircraft for the Air Force happens there. That's that's where it is. So, they don't fly a single one of them here. <laughs> no, they don't. No, no. They fly them everywhere else. But mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and that's part of the rough stuff with like our people's jobs online and all this. But it's it's not – that's why I help like Defend the Guard works well. It's not even dismantling the National Guard. It's not cutting any pork. It's not doing anything. All it's saying is – don't do this one extreme thing. So it, I'm, I'm hoping it's part of a message. This one, this one, okay. this one un unconstitutional thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I know we're not. I know we're not locked into the Constitution, but yeah. Well, yeah. And, but, and I think that the, it's hard with the generals come and speak, and it's like if you're going to build a house, sure, the builder shouldn't be telling you exactly how much like you should pay them like you're not going to totally take the word but you normally do want to get their advice and that's what they think this is when it's really not that like it is the difference between saying hey if i'm going to build a house how should i do it not a should you build a house chris makes a good point though because i don't think that the average american has any idea right now that the a post-nuclear world is what's given birth to this if, yeah. if if it wasn't trying to give the president all the power to control the button, folks would totally understand that we would always have to have Congress approve these types of conflicts. Yeah. Well, on that note, I'm actually going to end the recording so we can tell, say the really fun stuff off air. Ooh. So see y'all next time. <laughs>